started making clay after I had a kidney transplant. I didn't have anything to do. I couldn't go to work, so I was stuck cleaning house. And I had so much energy after that that I needed something to do with my time. So uh, my, do my uh, granddaughter, Emma, was running for Little Miss Cherokee. And we had gotten her her tear dress, we'd gotten her her corn beads, and uh, Sheila Bird came and sewed her moccasins on her feet. And she needed some bracelets. She needed some traditional clay bracelets. And that's what got me started. I said, well, I'm a Cherokee. I can roll beads. I can, I can do that. And so I sat down and got me some clay and I made her a bracelet that she could wear while she was in the pageants. And I'm kind of obsessive compulsive. So I immediately went and got everything I needed to make the clay beads. And I started first with polymer clay. I did the polymer clay, clear clay, color it with chalk. I did all my own colors, made my own colors, and just went from there. It was great, it's, it's been great. It's just what I do. Everyone knows that I hand roll my beads. I did the polymer clay, and then I started doing paper. I would look at a piece of paper and uh, we were sitting in the car driving down the road and I had a straw and I, I rolled it around toothpick and I thought, hey, you know what, the, it looks like a bead. So I researched. I had a friend that gave me all of her magazines and um, I went through and tore out all the pretty pages. I made little bowls and I made paper beads. And then I started, when I'd be at the turkey holiday, I'd get a fan, get their flyer, make beads out of that make it out of wedded invitations, anything you wanted to keep, I would make it. I wanted to make traditional beads. I, I wanted to make the clay beads. So I talked to Annie Wildcat. She told me what she did, how she rolled them, that it wasn't hard. You know, she would tell me, you know, she said she would put her fingers in water to keep them wet because it does get dry. And she said, but you can spit in your hand like they did a long time ago. Uh, my mouth got dry doing that. So I started using the water. But uh, she was a great help to me. I could call her and say, hey, you know, how, how, how long do I have to let them dry? How do you fire yours? How do you make them so shiny? And, and she shared that with me. Um, I went from that to pottery. Took a clay, clay class from Jane Austen. And then I took another one, and then I took another one. And this was my first pot I ever made out of clay. I dug my own clay. I can dig my own clay. I can process my own clay. And uh, my husband's a big help. He does all of that for me. He even, when I did the paper, he even made me a roller for it so I didn't have to hurt my fingers so much anymore. I moved from the clay and started doing fabric. My, uh, my dad passed away. And I thought, what, what would be good for everybody from dad? Well, mom dug through his closet, found a shirt that dad preached in all the time his favorite one, and she said, use this. So I took uh, the back of the shirt out. He had prayed in it, preached in it, and I rolled, the, I rolled some beads. Everybody got a bracelet. The guys got a keychain with, with dad on it, shirt, you know, and he prayed for all of us. So I thought that that was a special thing. And then somebody told somebody that I made fabric beads, and somebody called me and said, you know, my little, my little girl, my, my cousin's little girl passed away. And they gave me this tiny, tiny nightgown. And I made beads. And just the other day at church, I saw a lady and she had this bracelet on. And I was like, who made your bracelet? She goes, oh, some lady made it. And my husband told her, this is some lady. <laughs> and he pointed at me and I was like, she goes, what? And I said, I made that. And instantly we had a bond just because I made those beads. I pray over them before I cut them. I make sure I'm in a right mind to make them. I don't ever do anything upset. It's, I'm always happy when I do it. As I went along learning my culture, I learned uh, to put good feelings into everything. So no matter what I do, I put good feelings into everything. And I tell my granddaughter Emma, who is a fabulous artist, I tell her all the time, do it when you feel good. Don't use it when you're upset to calm down. You want to put good feelings out there so that whoever gets your stuff, they get it 
and they can feel your energy in it. Like I said, it's something to do. It's it's something to do for somebody else, and and I enjoy it. I love doing it. When I first started out, I went to the community building in Tahlequah. I took my stuff there, and I have a picture of it, and I didn't have anything. I had three stands with bracelets on it, and I sold out. I sold out, and then I realized, hey, you know, I can do this. So I started selling there every month, having me a little table there, and uh, then I ventured out, and uh, I went to Arkansas and went and set up a booth there. Uh, then the holiday came around, and uh, I thought, I'm going to try to do the holiday. I'm going to do the holiday. And I didn't really think that my work was native, but I'm native, so it's my Cherokee art. And people like it. I've done the holiday for four years, um, and it's been great to me. I love getting out and walking around and seeing all the vendors and, and spreading what I made financially. To the other booths as well and uh, bartering it's my favorite <laughs> and someone told me that I was an artist I never really saw myself as an artist but you know my brother can carve he can carve bowls um, my sister can do beautiful beadwork my nephew can draw like nobody's business my mother could quilt I have a cousin that can paint can draw repurpose stuff so it's in our blood, and I like to think that that came from our ancestors.